Hi, this is Leisha. I teach digitizing classes at my girlfriend's quilt shop in Logan, Utah. For more information about the shop or the classes you can take there, see the link in the description below. As always, if you find this video helpful, be sure to give me a like and subscribe to my channel so you can follow along as I post more lessons. This is the third video of the PE11 series. One of the top things people say they want to learn when I give my classes is how to add text to a design. So today we're going to be talking about the text tools. If you followed along with my last video, you have already set up your quick access toolbar. We have added the text tools to the toolbar here. Otherwise, you will find it on the home tab here. When you click on the text tool, you will get a drop down menu for the different types of text tools. This includes text, small text, monogram, and user mapped text. Today we will be focusing on the main text tool. When you click on this option, you will see the text tab appear at the top of the screen. First, let's take a look at the font drop-down menu. This drop-down allows you to choose the font you are going to use. The first few options will show your previously used fonts. Then you will see the fonts that come with the program. These are the fonts that include a number before the font name. The nice thing about these fonts is they are digitized in a way that you can be sure they will stitch out well. You will notice as you keep scrolling, there are some fonts with this TT logo. The TT indicates that these are true type fonts. These are fonts that come from your computer. We will go into more details about true type fonts in a later video. Right now, let's go back to the top of the list and choose 007 block one. You can choose a font size now if you would like using the font selector located here and here. The default size is 10 millimeters. When picking the font size, it is important that you look at the recommended size for the font you are using. It can be found at the right of the font name in the font selector. There are ways to go smaller than what is listed here, but we will save that for a later video as well. To choose the color you would like the font to be, use the color spools located here and here. This is the stitch type. You will typically leave this as a satin stitch, but this can be changed depending on the look you are going for. Once again, this will be a topic for another video. To create your text field, simply click on your stitching area where you would like your text to be. You will notice that your text attributes tab opens on the right hand side docker. This is where you type your text using your keyboard. Below the text field is a list of characters that are available with the selected font. You can also use this list to insert different characters into the text field. I mainly use this for special characters. Once you have the text you want, press enter and the program will generate the font for embroidery. If you need to make changes to the text, make sure your text is highlighted and double click on the text box. You can also select the edit text button on the text tab. Notice that you cannot write multiple lines of text in the text field. To have multiple lines, you must create a new text field for each line. I think that this is a bug in the program and I hope that it will be fixed one day. Now that your font is generated, you can still change the font type, size, and color using the selectors that we talked about earlier. You can also use the black boxes surrounding the font to adjust the size. The full size of the selected object can be seen in the bottom left hand corner of the screen if you are aiming for a certain size. Remember that you can change between inches and millimeters using this button in your rulers. Notice that the size selector on the text tab adjusts to reflect your changes. You can also adjust the size using the size options in the home tab. Once again, you will need to make sure that you do not go smaller than the recommended font size, but also be careful to not go too large because as I mentioned in a previous video, your stitch lengths do not want to go larger than 10 millimeters. I will make a video on how to make really large text in the future. If you decide you do not like where the font is located on your embroidery field, hover over the font and where you see the crossed arrows, click and drag the text where you would like it to be. If you would like the text to be exactly in the middle of the sewing field, use the shortcut key Control M. The red circle above the text allows you to rotate it. You can also do this using the Rotate Flip dropdown on the Home tab. Within the Rotate Flip dropdown, you can use Flip the text to create a mirror image either vertically or horizontally. You can also use Control H to flip vertically and Control J to flip horizontally. Notice that when the text is selected, there are small white diamonds over the individual characters in the text. Clicking on one of these will allow you to make adjustments to that individual letter. You will see some green arrows appear. These allow you to change the size, angle, move the letter up and down or side to side in relation to the other letters. And you can even use this feature to change the font type or color of the highlighted letter. You can select and make these changes to multiple letters at a time using the control key. Let's take a look at the text attributes docker on the right. 
Make sure that the text you just created is highlighted. If it is not selected, simply click directly on the font or click and drag to select the font. First notice that by each option there is a little house. After making changes, you can click on this house to change the settings back to default. Now let's go over the options. Starting at the top, you will see the kerning option. Kerning is actually a fancy name for character spacing, which is also an option below. You can use the up and down arrows or type in a number to change this. Negative numbers make the letters closer together and positive numbers make them further apart. Notice that the results are the same whether you use the kerning option or the character spacing option. Below kerning is the vertical offset. This will move your text up and down on the sewing field. I find it easier to simply drag the font like I showed you before. Rotate angle will rotate the letters. You can use the arrow or type in a value to make the change. The line spacing and alignment options are what make me hopeful that one day we can type multiple lines into the text field. Line spacing does nothing right now, but it would come in handy if we could create multiple lines of text in the same text field. Alignment does move your text relative to where you clicked on the sewing area to create the text field, but it isn't too helpful when you want to line up multiple lines of text. Instead, I click and drag to select all the text and then use the Arrange tool located here. You can also left click to find the Arrange tool. Directions let you choose if your letters go vertically or horizontally. Transform is where the real fun begins. This is how you will shape your fonts. First, select the checkbox, and then you can choose how you would like your font to appear. You will notice that each of the options have green arrows that allow you to make adjustments to how they look. Sometimes these can be a little finicky, and each option is different, but they are pretty easy to figure out after you play with them for a little while. Remember, if you ever make a change you don't like, you can always hit the undo button or control Z. You can use these as many times as you need to get back to where you started. Now that you have the font looking the way you like, you might want to rush to get it stitched out, but there are more settings that can help it stitch out easier and look nicer. To find these settings, select the Sewing Attributes tab located on the right hand docker. If you do not see the docker here, you can access it by clicking on the View tab at the top of the screen, Attributes drop down, and Sewing Attributes. When it first opens up, you will see the Beginner Mode setting. The settings under this mode are pretty limited, so click on the To Expert Mode button to get the more advanced settings. In order to make changes to your text, you will once again need to make sure that your text is highlighted with the little boxes surrounding it. The first setting is the Under Sewing option. This is the stabilizing layer put down before the letters themselves are stitched out, and it helps for a cleaner stitch out. Normally you see this option used most often, but you can choose a different understitching pattern for different projects. For example, if you're stitching onto a towel, it's a good idea to have a very dense understitching to help prevent the pile from poking through the letters, so you might choose this option and select dense. I'm going to assume this is going on cotton, so I will change mine back to the outline option. Next is the stitch density. The default lettering is 5 stitches per millimeter. Typically for lettering that is between 10 and 20 millimeters in size, I find this to be too dense. I would recommend changing this from anywhere between 4.5 and 4.8 stitches per millimeter. The density that you choose is dependent on the size of your font as well as the look you are going for. The larger the font you have, the higher you will want your density to be, but you will really need to make sure to do some test stitches to decide the density that you like in the different sizes. Half stitch is a very important setting to have on when you are stitching out text. When you have a curve in a text, or in a shape, like in a satin stitch, the satin stitches might begin to bunch together. This can cause holes in the fabric and break threads and needles. The half stitch setting adjusts the length of some of these stitches to drop before the outline to avoid these issues. Next is pull compensation. When you're stitching out an item, the tension of the thread actually pulls the size of the shape or text inward and makes the shape seem squished and the text seem thinner. Pull compensation compensates for this. With text, I typically only set it to 0.1 or 0.2, but you can also set it higher if you would like to make your text seem bold. Connection points changes where the stitching of the letters begins and ends. To see this better, I'm going to change my view type to stitches. These dotted lines show the thread jumps. When you have it set to default, the thread jumps are pretty long, but if you set it to closest, they are short and sometimes so short you cannot even see that they are there. It makes the stitching go faster as your thread may not always need to be cut between letters. But if you have a single needle machine that does not automatically cut the thread, you might want to choose farther apart. That way, you have a longer jump stitch to make cutting them easier. Now it is finally time to get stitching. Remember to test stitch the design on a scrap piece of fabric. Thanks for watching. 
Once again, be sure to like my video and subscribe to my channel if you found this helpful, and leave a comment below if you have any questions or have a topic you would like me to cover in the future.